Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident. Welcome to our revision of the Mathematics N3 question paper and this paper was written in November 2020. We have looked at um, question number one, question two, question three, question four. Now we are looking at question five of that particular paper and the aim of this revision is to give you some strategies on how you could have approached this. Now, as you go through this revision, just picture yourself in the final exam and um, ask yourself, were you going to be able uh, to solve this question? If not, how did I approach it? And can you solve it on your own as a way also of revising so that should you meet something similar, you are also going to have an experience of working with it so don't just watch the video but try to practice after you have gone through this video now let us look at this question 5.1 this question is six marks it was actually some good marks there and what does it say it says determine dy over dx and this is calculus dy over dx is simple calculus so I say determine dy over dx of the following function by using the rules, you see, the rules of differentiation. So you need to know the rules of differentiation, which I cover extensively and intensively in my mathematics entry for the underdogs. I would encourage you to grab hold of that. And then it says, this is very important because for you to get all your marks, it says leave the final answer with positive exponents that's one part and secondly in said form where applicable so that is part two if you forget on this you are going to be penalized two marks so uh, the aim here is to score all your all your in this case your six marks so let us start with the uh, question. So we're given y is equal to that. So whenever you see a fraction, it means you need to remove that particular fraction before you can actually apply dy over dx. So the first one is to take this particular x. Remember, this x is to the power one. I'm using laws of exponents here because with differentiation, uh, it works hand in hand with the laws of exponents. Now there's a division sign like I said in the previous, um, uh, I think it was question two, to take that to the top, you are going to have to say this is y is equal to, and then you introduce a bracket. So you are going to have, again, you have got two fractions, that particular fraction, and even here, you have that particular fraction. So you'll have seven x to the power negative one. In the first one minus 5 now when you're given square root of x there is a, a silent 2 there so this is same as to the power 1 over 2 as I say you need to grab hold of exponential rules and then this is being multiplied by x to the power negative 1 because it was positive at the bottom so the next thing there is to expand and when you're expanding, this will multiply and this will multiply. So what are you going to have? You're going to have y is equal to 7x to the power negative 1 times x to the power negative 1 minus 5. Actually, there is some error here. It is 5 dot or you can say 5x to the power half i just said 5 to the power half so which is 5x to the power 1 over 2 and then times x to the power negative 1 so that is where why i think it's actually six marks because you have to first simplify now you apply the first law there of exponents which is negative 1 plus negative 1 when the bases are multiplying the bases are the same you add the exponents minus 5x to the power same thing 1 over 2 plus minus 1 
so you are going to have y is equal to 7 x to the power negative 2 minus 5 x to the power negative 1 over 2 so this is what you are supposed to differentiate so you are going to have if i write it again 7x to the power negative 2 minus 5 to the power if i can just take that off 5 to the power negative 1 over 2 and then that's when you can apply dy over dx and the rules of differentiation which is equal to 7 you drop the negative 2 and x to the power negative 2 you subtract a 1 minus 5 you drop the negative uh, i keep forgetting that x to the power half there so as i said you drop the negative 2 and then you have got x minus 1 over 2 you subtract a 1 so that is the rules of differentiation 7 times negative 2 it is negative 14 x to the power minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 minus 5 times a negative half it is a positive 5 over 2 x to the power minus half minus 1 it is minus 3 over 2 but just to be sure it is um negative 1 over 2 minus 1 there is minus 3 over 2 as you can see now moving on from there remember that's where if you left your answer like this they are actually going to penalize you because i say leave your answer final answer number one is positive exponents so let's let's deal with positive exponents and to do that you must get rid of this is a negative exponent and that is a negative exponent so to get rid of that is to say minus 14 over x to the power of 3 see it was negative i took the introduce a division sign is now positive these are the laws of exponents again plus 5 over 2 again is x to the power 3 over 2 it was negative now it's positive when i introduced the division sign so that was one part now the next part says and in third form so if you don't do that again they will penalize your mark because this can go further if you check the lessons on thirds so this is equal to minus actually if i can just chain use a different marker so it will be equal to minus 14 over 3 i mean x to the power of uh, 3 and then plus 5 over 2 now that is 3 over 2 the uh, the denominator there is the square root which you can actually put the 2 or leave the 2 x and then the 3 there is there as to the power of 3 so basically this is how you are supposed to fulfill the two conditions number one positive exponents and number two in set form as you can see the square root it is the third form so this is how you are going to be able to score all your marks. Now let us move on to the next question. The next question is 5.2.1. I mean 5.2 says given f of x. So we are dealing with that and it is 5 marks. So if you look at this question, it says given f of x is that says determine the coordinates of the turning points. So when you are dealing with turning points of f of x, you are still dealing with dy over dx. So the first thing is, if you are given f of x is equal to 24x minus 2x cubed, 
Now, there is a condition that you need to always write. When they say coordinates of turning points, so you must say at turning point at that particular turning point f prime x is equal to zero that is a very important statement to mention so now if you are given f of x is that now if i can find from there f prime x is equal to now i'm using the rules of differentiation 24 times 1 minus 2 i drop the 3 x 3 minus 1 remember the rules of differentiation you need to be familiar with that which is 24 minus 6 x squared so that is my f prime x remember we are saying a turning point 24 we use my f prime x minus 6 x squared must be equal to 0 i'm just taking from the top there when you have done that you're solving for x take 24 is equal to this jump the sign it become positive 6 x squared divide by 6 on both sides so what you have is um 6 into 24 is 4 so 4 is equal to x squared and then you square root both sides but when you square root remember you are going to say plus or minus so plus or minus 2 is equal to x in this case so we have got two values of x the first one x is equal to positive 2 and then x is equal to minus 2 that is one way you could have solved it sometimes when you had it here just a different marker to say 4 is equal to x squared you could have actually taken for one side to say 0 is equal to uh, x squared and then 4 remember is same as 2 squared so this is a difference of 2 squares which has got x minus 2 and x plus 2 so this is equal to 0 so you can see it was going to give you the same answer as there must be two answers of x now when you have gotten the two values of x you need now to remember that the question say the coordinates so we have got the x coordinate now we need to find the y coordinate to find the y coordinate you write the original equation f of x is equal to 24x minus 2x cubed and here we are saying when x is equal to start with the positive 2 so you are going to have f of 2 is equal to 24 of 2 minus 2 2 cubed and then the answer there So it's 24 into 2 minus 2, 2 cubed. So I'm getting 32 as the first one. Now the second one, I repeat again and say a uh, different marker here. I can say here. Um, f of x in this case is f of minus 2 is equal to 24 remember the second value of x is minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 cubed this is when x is equal to negative 2 so now if I use the calculator there it is 24 negative 2 and then minus 2 it's negative 2 cubed it's negative 32 
So I've got two values of y with the two values of x. The question was find determine the coordinates. And you are going to put it in coordinate form. So the coordinate form is the first one is when x is positive 2, y was positive 32. So this is a coordinate form. And the second one is when x is negative 2 and y is negative 32. So this is the coordinate form. So the answer actually is the one that I've just put in coordinate form. So that is how you, you are supposed to solve that. Now moving on to the next question. It says calculate the x and y intercepts of f of x. And you can see this is 3 marks, the x and the y intercepts. Now to find the x and y intercepts, let us start with the x intercepts in this case. Now what you need to know, at the x intercepts, y is equal to 0. Remember your y is your f of x. In other ways, f of x must be equal to 0. All right. I think um, there is an error on this question now here. Remember, we said our f of x was 24x minus 2x cubed. I think there was a typing error there. So it must be maintained. So if I can change that to say it is 24x minus 2x cubed. That is the actual original the 24x minus 2x cubed. So um, as I said at, at x intercept y is equal to 0. So what you do is you take the f of x which is 24x minus 2x cubed you must equate that to f of x remember this is f of x and f of x is 0 and then after that you solve for x so here you have got 2x that is common and then 2 it in 24 is 12 minus x squared I think is equal to 0. So either 2x is equal to 0 or 12 minus x squared is equal to 0. So when you keep on solving for x divide by 2 there, you can see the first one is x is equal to 0 and then the second one it says 12 is equal to x squared and remember you square root and you also square root and when you square root you will have a plus or minus so our x therefore will be equal to plus or minus then you find the square root of 12 in this case which will be 3.464 now again let me emphasize that number remember they said if you're not you must leave your answer to three decimal places so if you remember if i do that it's um three decimal place you can see that the one does not affect affect the four or you can set it up with your calculator and say shift setup then you say six and then say three decimal place if you do that your calculator can round off which is three comma four six four so that is um the values of x and i mean under the x intercepts now remember says calculate the x and the y intercepts so in the coordinate form here what it simple means is um when x is zero y is zero that's the first one the second one, when x is 3.464, y is 0. And the second one is when x is negative 3.464, again y is 0. So all the values of y is equal to 0 in this case. 
The second one says find the y-intercept. Now in the y-intercept or intercept, now remember there is a condition for the y-intercept, x must be equal to 0. So what you have, remember f of x is 24x minus 2x cubed. So now f of 0 is equal to 24 0 minus 2 0 cubed. And you can see that symbol this becomes 0. So that is actually the x-intercept. And in coordinate form, when x is 0, f of 0 is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0. So that is that particular point. So the x-intercept, the x and y-intercepts, the x-intercept is 0 plus or minus 3. The y-intercept is also 0. Now let us move on. Now question 5.2.3. Uh, again, as I said, I think there was a typo error here. This must be 24x minus, uh, the original says minus 2x cubed. So then say sketch the graph of f of x. So now we are sketching the graph of that and show the calculated values in question 5.2.1 and 5.2.2. So if you go to 5.2.1 towards the coordinates of the turning points, we must show them as well as the x and the y intercept. So if you want to plot that part, as, I, as they said, you are not given a graph paper. You need to be able to plot it uh, with uh, whatever information you're having with a ruler as well as a pen so this is what I'm having here so if this becomes my y this is my x-axis so you need to identify your values or know your values if you go previously the first one you must know your because value of x, you can see x is 2 and minus 2 here. And x is positive and negative 3,4. So the 3,4 is the bigger one. So if you can actually mark your number then to say if this becomes positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. Divide your line into equal parts. So this is 1, 2, 3, and 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and minus 4. I'm ending in minus 4 because the uh, lowest value is minus 3 point something. I'm ending in positive 4 because the highest value is positive 3 point something. And then let, let us look at the y values. In the beginning, we've got a 32 and minus 32. And then the other one, um, there's no y value. So it's the 32 and the minus 32. So you can actually divide the line into 10. For example, if I can actually say this is divided to say this is 10, 20, 30, and 40. I do the same thing below here. is 10 20 30 and 40 so that's what we have now we have to sketch this graph so we start by looking at the first one it says the graph is 2 is to 32 so we come here let me use a different marker 2 when x is 2 y is positive 32 so in a way you must be trying with the ruler you will be more accurate but you can see that there is a point there secondly it is the other one way but it was 
negative 2 is to negative 32 if you still remember there was a positive and negative one so you do the same thing down there it must be somewhere there so you have another point there then so we are covered with this let us move on to the other one now when x is 0 y is 0 you have a point here 0 and 0 is in that center and then when x is 3 comma 4 6 4 y is 0 you also try to identify 3 comma 4 so it's almost like 3 comma 5 so you have a point again here remember there is a positive and a negative point so you also negative 3 comma 5 you have a point where the graph will cut that so this is uh, the points that you have then it says sketch this particular graph so if remember this is a sketch so your sketch if you do it well it will come in 10 there remember these are turning points it will cut there after cutting it will turn there this is the second turning point and it will cut like that so it continues it continues so if you look carefully this is the turning point this says show the calculated values remember this was minus 2 and it was negative 32 you need to show that point even here it was a positive 2 and a positive 32 if you don't show this point they will penalize you remember you need all your marks and then even here you can actually mark that point to say this particular point is 3 comma 4 6 4 even here you can say it's negative 3 comma 4 6 4 and then this is 0 0 is the coordinate or you can just say 0 on its own and then you have managed to label each and every point that's why they say show the calculated values in figure in question 5.2.1 and 5.2.2 so then don't forget you need to label this graph as your f of x you can go further to say it is minus 24x minus 2x cubed or even if you just say it's f of x it will still give you your marks so that is how you were able to sketch this particular cubic graph using the information that is given mainly the coordinates of the turning points as well as the x and the y intercepts i cover this in detail in uh, the book uh, mathematics entry for the anatox it also comes uh, with videos which makes it easier for you to understand you can see that it is five marks and the graph was not difficult to plot you just need to identify your key things which is your coordinates of the turning point as well as the intercepts now we have come to the end of our question number five I will encourage you to also check question number six so that you can see how the uh, question number six which is the last question ended thank you